Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining my session today. My name is Artem. I am one of the creators of open source project Cube, which is a semantic layer, and a co-founder and a CEO at a company Cube, which are commercializing that open source project. And Abin is a major developer of that project right now. Uh, today, we'll talk about semantic layers and LLMs and what future they may have together. Uh, before we talk about them being together, I wanted to kind of talk briefly about semantic layer separately and LLM separately. And we'll start with what is semantic layer essentially. So uh, in the last two, three years, a lot of people over the internet were talking about semantic layers, the need for universal semantic layers. Many companies have been started to address this need and keep including, but really semantic layer as a kind of a concept and as a part of the product, it was developed uh, many years ago for the first time. And it was about 30 years ago to be specific in nineties, about 1992 by business objects. So initial idea for the semantic layer was to make it a part of the BI and a BI is a business intelligence. And so it can enable self-serve access uh, to the data for the end users. So idea is that back then in 90s, the BIs, they were all like monolith applications. Think about it like a big whale with a lot of stuff in it. The ETL, the warehouse, the visualizations, and the BI itself and a semantic layer, of course. And the idea was to put a semantic layer to abstract the SQL away, abstract all the relations in data. So all end users, they just can operate on the metrics level concepts and drag and drop them and kind of get to the charts. And uh, business object, they even had a patent and protected it through the patent of semantic layers. So like for the next 10 years, no one was really building semantic layers uh, until MicroStrategy defended successfully themselves against this patent. Um, so what happened later, you know, like after the first generation of business objects like MicroStrategy and uh, business objects, what happened is that this whale of the monolith applications sort of exploded and we entered the cloud age and instead of old on-premises technologies, we started to have a lot of lightweight cloud-based solutions. And uh, the idea was let's just democratize data because with this monolith applications, only few sort of people knew how to operate with them, but we wanted to give data to more people. And it led to this, to the whale, to just a blue up of the whale. And now we have a lot of different tools. Um, we have a lot of different visualization tools, different ETLs tools, different warehouses. And now it creates an interesting problem with that we have many semantic layers embedded into these different BI tools. Sometimes they're advanced, sometimes they're less advanced, but the fact is that we have all of them right now and when in the modern organization, which leads to inconsistency. And that's where like people have started to have conversations in the last two, three years. Like we probably need one universal semantic layer that can hold all these data definitions and then give this data definitions to the different semantic layers within BI tools so we can make sure that the data is consistent across all of these different places. Um, now let's take a step back and talk a little bit about AI before we talk about semantic layer and AI future together. So I think we all know by now that AI is probably going to change how software works. Some people, they're so bullish and they say like, AI will eat software at some point. And um, I think I'm sure that AI will affect how we operate with data, how we work with the data, but how exactly the light and how it's going to be, how it's going to look like. And um, when we think about modern AI and by modern AI, I mean mostly LLMs, foundational models, probably the most magical part about it is the fact that it feels like it understands the content you're given to, the, to that system. An example here, you give it a text, you ask a question, 
and it kind of replies back and it it has a feeling that it knows what it's talking about you can give it a image of photo and say hey what is what is inside this photo and it actually can tell you what is on this photo so if you take the same idea and say what if ai can understand the organization's data right like the same way it can understand the text we are, we are giving it to AI systems right now. So what what benefits, what kind of opportunities it unlocks? So it's obviously can unlock the natural language access to data, right? So people would ask questions about metrics and get answers back, but it also can go beyond this. It can give some advanced cataloging and observability features like AI can tell you, hey, this is a metrics that you need to, you know, like think about and you can observe and kind of monitor this metric this way and can look at any issues, reliability issues with the metrics and normally all of this because it understands the data and understand the metrics, the business, right? And then the same true for like a caching and optimizations and for access control and governance. So there's like a lot of areas where we can have a fundamental improvements if AI would understand the data. Now the question is like how we can make that AI understand the data. And I think to AI to understand the data, it actually needs to access data about the data, essentially the metadata, the metrics definitions, the lineage, all of that. So and, and that's a point where like semantic layers and AIs, they come together, right? Because if you look at this, so overall sort of landscape, why we had a semantic layer in the first place, we had them for humans, for BI tools, so humans can understand the data. But now we need it for AI too, so AI can understand the data. So if we kind of look at it again from a history of the semantic layers, is that uh, the sort of the initially the semantic layers were built to like to represent some sort of a relations in data, to represent metrics, to KPIs. So we all can model this data to specific definitions inside organization and human can just kind of use these definitions. They don't need to think about what kind of SQL they can write. But the same architecture actually true for the AI. So when we are building these definitions, we can give them to the AI and then it can act based on these definitions. When we go to like more like a technical terms, how it might look like is that AI can get all these descriptions of the metric, the query history, the lineage, what is the most common dimensions in your tables, what how they've been used together, all these connections as an input to the text. We can take the text and put it in a vector store, right? And then when we do the inference, when we call the like AI system, we can attach all this context to this call and saying, hey, here's all the information about this metrics. Here's all the information about uh, lineage, how they connect it, and then just kind of make an, make an action, do something. And the interesting thing about it, if it goes through the semantic layer, we also have additional protection layer because uh, semantic layer acts as a not only the place which provides information about the data, but also as a place which ensures correctness of the data. Because all these AI systems, and that's a big worry that they may hallucinate and create a wrong queries, create a wrong SQL. But this all AI system, they need to go through the semantic layer to access data, as you can see on a chart here. So you cannot go directly to the database. That's a whole point. That's why semantic layer was built for humans. The same idea, humans don't need to go directly to databases. They need to go through the semantic layer. And the same here for AI. AI should go through the semantic layer to the database and be able to access data in a safe way on a high level abstract. So that's where like, semantic layer and AI can work together. And like, because AI is essential text in text out and semantics, it's all about text. So um, I, I know like in a landscape, you can try it even today. So, you know, like a cube is an open source is land chain, for example, is an open source technology for like integration and an interesting community built in, people are building together. So uh, I encourage, you know, like all of you to play around with, you know, like different applications of how you can use semantic layer with LLMs and there are like a companies are building natural language 
chatbots or different other technologies on top of semantic layers and give it a try. And, you know, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you.